Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber, or if you are new here, welcome. I hope you enjoy today's video. I'm gonna go ahead and start onto the first really quick DIY. I have this willow wreath from Dollar Tree, some lamb's ear, some solo wood flowers, bows, or ribbon, <laughs> and some plaster paint that I'm going to paint the willow wreath with, as you see here. I'm really getting in getting into all the nooks and crannies of this, but also still leaving some of that natural wood that it has to peek out. So I think this just gives it a really nice farmhouse soft look. I really love the look of the plaster on against the wood, and I really just love working with these wreath forms. So after I get that to my liking, you can do it as much or as little as you'd like, and you could even do a different color. I'm going to get my um, lamb's ear in here and you can get this from Walmart for about 97 cents and I'm just using two picks so I kind of measure out about how much of a stem I need for it to stick through there and then I'm going to go ahead and trim off what excess that I see that I don't need and anything sticking out I'll just trim that right off as well. These are pretty easy to cut through and I'm just using some um, metal cutters I forgot what they were called <laughs> and then after that I mean this wreath is so easy I am just hot gluing on some solo wood flowers I bought these online and they are so pretty they come in so many colors so definitely check out I think it's solo wood flowers you could probably just google it and it'll come up if I remember I will try to leave the link down below so to that website so you can check it out but they're so pretty and fun to um, craft with they're just really nice I love these color uh, the color scheme of this wreath today and um, y'all let me know what you think of this really simple craft DIY I mean this took no time at all I didn't film doing this bow. Um, that ribbon is, I believe, from Hobby Lobby. I got it on sale. And I am not good at doing bows at all, so I don't ever film me doing bows. I really wing it, but it came out okay. It's not perfect um, at all. <laughs> but, you know, I just played with it till I could get it to my liking. And I'm sure y'all could do much better bows, make it so much prettier and fluffier. But this is what we're working with. I think it came out really cute. Y'all let me know. So today's collaboration is with Missy and Tammy. Missy over from Crafty Cove and Tammy from the Rusted Willow. They are the sweetest gals. They do beautiful crafting and DIYs. We will have two, I will have two other videos linked down below. One to each of the ladies videos for today. Go over and check out their channels. Here's a little overview of Missy. She does a lot of farmhouse, DIYs, thrift flips, things that I think you will enjoy, and I know you will love her. Now, Tammy is one of my newer friends. She does a lot of um, farmhouse DIYs as well, and she is just the absolute, absolute sweetest. As you can see through her videos here, she has a lot of videos to go through a lot of ideas and crafts she's so great at what she does so definitely go check both of them out the links will be down below all right guys second craft i got this little envelope from walmart it was whenever valentine's day was over so i got it really really cheap i want to say maybe two dollars or even less it was like when their valentine stuff was on major sale I spray painted that silver that you just saw there and then I make a mistake here you know I'm going in with this brush with the dark gray and um, I'm dabbing it all over this envelope trying to give it um, trying to give it the faux galvanized look and I should have just went in with a sponge rather than this uh, stenciling brush I thought it was going to give it the look, but as I went on, I could clearly see that it wasn't. So I don't show you too much of this, but I did want to show you how I got like the base coat of this down. Um, but you could definitely just start off with like a cosmetic sponge or like any sponge from the crafters paint area and um, just start off with that instead of doing what I did with the brush. So I finally was like, okay, let me try out this sponge, and I go in with a lighter gray than what I started with, since I already had that dark gray coverage base down. 
Um, so I go in and I just keep dabbing back and forth between the dark gray and the light gray, trying to blend it in as much as possible. As you see, I'm just dabbing, 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 no rhyme or rhythm to it. I want to kind of leave some of the silver that you spray painted peeking through all of that. Um, I'm really right here trying to just cover up all the little dabs from the brush so it doesn't look like I used the brush to dab it. And it did take some time and that was just because I um, was using the brush at first but after I switched to the sponge it went a lot quicker. So I am just have my um, sponge, it's kind of cut like a triangle shape on that sponge. So it's giving it really the perfect look. So if you can, if you have like a different type of sponge, you can just cut a triangle into it and just go about blending in between the dark gray and the light gray. And if you have silver paint, that would be great to add in there too, if it's just like a kind of matte silver paint. So that um, top coat I showed you is from Rust-Oleum. I spray paint that on top of it. It's just a clear protective coat. And I do that because I'm gonna go in with a decal on this and I don't want it to lift up all of that paint. Um, I'm gonna go in with a brown and an orange. I mix it together and I'm gonna give it the rest look as you already see it happening here. I'm talking slower than what my video is going, my apologies. But I am just running that all along the edges of my envelope, um, anywhere that I just see fitting that it would naturally be resting at is where I add it. And I'm just adding it with like a fluffier, small brush just to give it that real nice rested look. What do you guys think how I did my first time doing this faux galvanized look? I think after I switched the sponge, it didn't come out too horrible, but definitely when I was doing the brush, I was like, okay, this might be trash. <laughs> I'm glad I could save it because I was getting really discouraged using that brush, but once I switched the sponge, I got really excited. So I'm going in with a little more of the orange just to give it more of a realistic um resting I thought it looked a little too dark brown so that's what you see me doing here now I have this decal that says hello from my Cricut that I printed out you can use stickers or rub on transfers I um, rubbed on everything but the H because I wanted the H to be a little bit closer so that happens sometimes where you don't get the exact measurement and that's okay and then I just add a um, lamb's ear and this really pretty flower that I got from Dollar Tree. And I think this came out absolutely beautiful. I think I did a pretty good job for my first time of faux galvanized. Let me know what you think. All right, for this one, we're gonna need a long uh, sign from Dollar Tree. Those Dollar Tree planks, and I'm using these two um, shiplap papers that I got from Hobby Lobby in gray and in white and then I'm just going to go ahead and use my rotary blade to cut around each plank and I do some in my white paper some in my dark gray paper and I also do it vertically and horizontally like where the shiplap is going up and down vertically and horizontally um, like you see right there. So I just keep doing that on both sides of paper until I have seven of these done because I'm gonna put the words kitchen on it. And since kitchen has seven letters, that is what I was needing. But if you're doing like home or anything, then you just need four, um, et cetera, et cetera, just depending on what word you wanna do. And you can use all kinds of paper. You don't have to just use this paper. There's so many possibilities with this DIY. So I'm Mod Podging this paper down to my plank woods and um, I'm not going to make you watch all of that but that is exactly what I'm doing, pouring Mod Podge on the wood and placing my paper on it. Pretty easy. Um, after I get all of my paper onto each plank, I go back over each plank and I seal it with Mod Podge as well. Each and every single one of those, just get them sealed. Guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment down below letting me know which of these three 
DIYs end up being your favorite. I have to say I am tied between the envelope and this one right here. Okay, so after I got um, a top coat of Mod Podge on these wood planks, I am going in with my sanding sponge and just roughing up all those edges, not making you watch all of them, but that is what I did for each one of them. Then I'm going to take white and gray. Sorry guys if y'all hear my son, he's running around. Um, and my antique color from Waverly. And I'm going in on each of these planks and distressing it with the Waverly's Antique. And I go all around the edges, um, not too much through the middle, just a little bit. And then I will take a wipey and wipe off any excess that I got that I didn't want. And that really um, gives it the look that I want. It just keeps getting more and more distressed and I am living for it. I love the way this came out. You see me wiping down any excess and that is what I do through all of them and it really gives it a great look. And we're protected on our paper because of that Mod Podge we sealed it with. So this is how each of them are looking. Now I'm going to go in with the gray shiplap papers and go in with some white and dry brush it over just to give it more of a distressed look. And I'm just using a little chippy brush for this. And I am going against the wood grain of the paper. So how if it's going vertical, I brush vertically. If it's going horizontally, I brush horizontally. And with my white one, I am going in with very, very little gray to distress the white one. And just blending that brown in with the paints that I'm using now as well. This is just giving it a really rough, rustic look. You can skip over this if you do not like all that look, but I do. So that's what I do. Now taking the Dollar Tree sign, I yank off that ribbon, yank off that bunny, sand any um, thing that might be sticking up from me yanking things off. I sand it down to give it a smooth, finished look. Now the sign, the bunny sign, is a little shorter than all these planks end up being but that's okay i will continue to show you what we do so i lay it all out first get my look that i'm wanting and of course my first and last planks are hanging off the sign i get them glued down all even and if you didn't want to even you could even like um i don't know what it would be called like jagged like each plank going one going down one going up one going down one going up whatever look you want i just thought that would have been something else cute to do too so anyways, I get these all hot glued down, and then um, you see the back there. It's all hanging off, and it's going to be fine. We're going to cover it, so don't worry. I take these stencils that I printed out with my Cricut, and they give me a little bit of a hard time because I didn't want to use my transfer tape because my transfer tape that I have is super sticky, and I knew it would rip up the paper even with the Mod Podge on it. So it took me a bit to get all of these on here, but just with some patience, I really think it was worth taking the time to do it and not end up ripping up my entire project. <laughs> um, but I kind of get smart and you see what I'm doing with the eye there. I peel a little piece off and then peel the rest of the backing up. It helps me a little bit. Um, it doesn't get anything perfect, but I got it to my liking. I did end up ripping my E. That's why the E is missing right now. I end up getting that printed out, of course, again, but I wanted to go on with my project for now, so don't mind the missing E. Um, I'm going in on the white shiplap with black um, paint for my stencil, and on the gray shiplap, I will go in with some white paint for my stencil. I won't make you watch me stencil this whole thing, but I did want you to just see um, the K and the I the black against the white shiplap and then the white against the gray shiplap. See how you like that and how I do it. I don't wait to go throughout the whole sign to peel up the stenciling because I don't want the paint to over dry it and it'd be really hard to pick up that stencil paper and then I again might tear my paper from my planks. So after I'm done stenciling each one I don't even really let it dry. I go ahead and get it up. And it stays just fine. Just try to be mindful of not rubbing any of your paint. And 
that is all I do for um, this whole sign. Just dab on some paint with my stencil brush. I'm using like paper to help me stay within the stenciling line and don't get on the um, paper or wood grain any more than I need to. Now I take the Dollar Tree sanding sponge and I go in and distress all my letters just so they're not so perfect. And you want to be careful with the black because it does get messy. So you hear, see me here taking a baby wipe and cleaning up all around the letters. And again, it cleans up okay because we had that Mod Podge sealed on top of our paper. So you, I do do that um, because I made a mess with the black. But in the end, it comes out fine. So now taking um, some shipping paper. I learned this from Sammy at Unicorn Dust Design. She... Um, showed me this well she shows everybody on her on her page not just me um to finish up your sign you know put this in the back of it and it looks 10 times better and that's what we're definitely doing for this sign just because of all that's going on behind it so i just cut me out a size that i need for this sign trim it up and that is it i mean it's easy to cover up these signs and it looks 50 times better instead of all that busyness that we had going on. Now I am just going to add a hanger to it with this pretty braided rope. It doesn't really matter. You can just use some jew or whatever string you have. I staple that on, right? Make sure I get in the middle of my sign. And that is it for this craft, guys. Remember to let me know which one of these you love the most. I absolutely love this one in that galvanized metal sign that I did. Um, don't forget to check out Missy and Tammy down below. Give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you all in my next one. Bye for now guys.